वेलकम टू रा ऑनलाइन टूडे टॉपिक इज एजमा इन प्रेगनेंसी एजमा इन प्रेगनेंसी इज अ वेरी कॉमन रेस्पिरेटरी डिजीज एंड द बर्डन इज ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीज वर्ल्ड वाइड एंड इट हैज बिकम वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन पब्लिक हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम्स द इंसिडेंस ऑफ एजमा इन प्रेगनेंसी इंक्रीजेस इन इट इज अराउंड थ्री टू एट परसेंट इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एंड अराउंड एट परसेंट ऑफ वुमेन सफर फ्रॉम एजमा ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी इन ग्रेट ब्रिटेन एंड अराउंड ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ प्रेगनेंट वुमेन सफर फ्रॉम एजमा इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया so asthma control levels are often changed during pregnancy and it is generally believed that one third of asthma patients are aggravated due to pregnancy mostly happens in the second trimester of pregnancy one third of asthmatics improve during pregnancy and there is no significant change observed in the remaining one third of the asthmatic patients who become pregnant a latest uh, multi case control study shows that Uh, this rule of 3 one third one third and one third the one third progressing the one third remaining same and the one third deteriorating they say like now this uh, estimate is actually uh, lower than the previous data and around 18.8% of the women are usually worsened in pregnancy asthma control during pregnancy is also associated with a multitude of other problems which we will see so why is it important to discuss asthma in pregnancy because around 65% of patients have poor control of asthma during pregnancy most of these people who are on inhaler technology it is not being correctly taken in around 65% of cases only 38% of the patients know what is the difference between asthma reliever medication and asthma controller medications only around 13% of patients have a written asthma action plan and very few of them around 17% only have a spirometry done in the past 5 years and only around 4% of them have a peak exploratory flow meter for monitoring asthma at home so asthma in pregnancy can have fetal as well as maternal consequences so the fetal complications can be sga that is small for gestational age due to chronic hypoxia baby can be low birth weight baby can also be having some congenital malformations like cleft lip or cleft palate there is also associated increased perinatal mortality in asthmatic pregnancies premature birth especially those patients who are uncontrolled or severe asthmatics during pregnancy has also been documented the maternal complications of asthma include maternal preeclampsia gestational hypertension gestational diabetes prenatal or antepartum hemorrhages more chances of cesarean section in asthmatic women who become pregnant there are more chances of urinary tract infection more chances of polyhydramnios or excessive amniotic fluid and due to that there is a more chance of premature rupture of membranes in asthmatic patients who become pregnant so what are the possible mechanisms of these problems so they say like asthma in pregnancy is associated with the inflammatory pathways in the mother and she the patient is also on corticosteroid therapy for her asthma the patient suffers from a long term hypoxia there are intermittent exacerbations of asthma during the severe or uncontrolled phase this all this leads to an altered uh, placental function and disorders of the fetal maternal hypoxia and uh, this all this can be exacerbated if there is a smoking history in the mother the fetal gender also plays a part in the steroidogenesis so all these Uh, mechanisms can predispose to low birth weight babies preterm labor uh, in the baby and it can also lead to preeclampsia and more chances of cesarean section in the mother so the pathogenic mechanisms of asthma remissions or aggravation during pregnancy is related to the physiological and pathological changes caused by pregnancy and mainly there is a mechanical enlargement of the growing uterus and there is a direct and indirect effect of the hormone changes of pregnancy on the tracheobronchial tree now with an increase of uterus size and the abdominal pressure the diaphragm in a normal pregnancy is elevated by around 4 to 5 cm the subcostal angle is also increased so from early pregnancy around 68 degrees to 103 degrees from early to the late pregnancy because of the diaphragm elevation because of the increased uterine size leading to the transverse and anterior posterior diameter of thorax being increased in a normal pregnancy now these changes can be compensated because the ligaments relax 
and the ligamentous attachment of ribs this all this leads to a decrease in the thoracic compliance during pregnancy so all these changes lead to a decrease in lung volume by around 5% and the functional residual capacity decreases by around 20% additionally in pregnancy there is also an increased body weight which leads to increased neck circumference and small oropharyngeal area because of the laryngeal edema in pregnancy and all this will dis dispose to dyspnea or difficult breathing in pregnancy so during pregnancy in order to meet the demands of the growing fetus and the exacerbated maternal increased metabolism a series of important changes occur in the hormone level so there is a rise in progesterone there is a rise in estrogen there is a rise in cortisol and prostaglandins and all these hormones affect the course of asthma now progesterone is a stimulant of respiratory dynamics and this can increase the sensitivity of respiratory center to carbon dioxide estrogen increases the sensitivity of progesterone receptor in the respiratory centers and thus both progesterone and estrogen jointly participate in the change of respiratory function within resetting of the center towards a higher respiratory rate the minute ventilation in pregnancy increases by 30 to 50% which is mainly because of the 40% increase in tidal volume there is not much of significant change in the respiratory rate even though these hormones have reset the axis now the total lung capacity the vital capacity the lung compliance and the diffusion capacity remain unchanged during pregnancy now what are the various mechanisms how these hormonal pathways affect the pathophysiology of asthma so various uh, pathological mechanisms have been postulated one is the effect of cortisol estradiol and progesterone on the respiratory center another one is a beta 2 adrenoreceptor responsiveness another one is steroidogenesis which is a little different in the male and female fetuses and also there is an altered immune status of pregnancy which is modulated by the progesterone hormone and the helper and the cytotoxic t cell pathways now all these changes in pregnancy can lead to worsening in one third of cases no change in one third of cases and an improved asthma in one third of cases now let us come to a case scenario a 23 year old non smoking woman which is a primi and she presents at 11 weeks of gestation with an 8 year history of asthma and this has worsened over the past day she reports the symptoms requiring albuterol 2 to 3 times per day and these symptoms interfere with sleep her forced expiratory volume in one second is 75% of the predicted value and if she takes albuterol it increases to 88% so since this is less than 80% she should be uh, put on a higher dose of inhalers and um, she is on inhalers and still her sleep is getting disturbed so that means she is not on a controllers so her controllers have to be increased so we'll discuss the management